everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this uh, webinar on how to market your online business. Uh, first, just um, this is the agenda that's laid out for today. Um, we'll start with, again, thanking Internachi for inviting me to present at the Spring Boost Conference. Uh, Want to go ahead and just put it out there. It's been a pretty strange year. Uh, we miss your faces in real life and really look forward to connecting again soon in person for real life conversations. That said, bear with me during this mega virtual presentation on all things web. You might hear some things that you don't quite understand, but I promise they'll be covered later. And as Brenda mentioned, Dan is available and can answer some questions as well. And there will be opportunities to ask them. Uh, some of the information will probably be overwhelming, but we will absolutely take care of you and make sure that we answer all that we can. So I'll start off first with telling you a little bit about me. Uh, I live in Asheville, North Carolina. I have a very sweet puppy that I'm obsessed with, and that's her in the picture, Hazel. And those are our beautiful mountains. Um, my background professionally is I've worked at a couple different web agencies, and I've been in the internet industry for about 15 years. I started working with HomeGage in 2015, building inspector websites and writing content for them. Uh, in 2017, Russell, who was one of the original founders of HomeGage, approached me about joining the crew full-time and launching the SEO program to help inspectors build their online presence. Um, have, since I'd already worked with the company for a while, I was pretty excited about coming on board to work with the web services team. So I wrapped up all of my existing website projects, SEO contracts, and came on board in March of 2017, which I like to call the first day of the rest of my life. So this slide here will pretty much sum up the presentation. So Google only loves you when everyone else loves you first. And this is true. Effective search engine optimization or SEO is a commitment, not a campaign. So online success for your business is all about committing to and getting all of the Google love. Like any relationship, this will take patience and time. So to get this started, we're just going to start with the basics and then we'll kind of delve into the nuts and bolts of all things web and Google. So the reason that you need a website for your home inspection business. Um, you absolutely have to have one to stay competitive and to grow your business. 90% of users, that's 90% of users will look online first. And being on top of your marketing game these days means that you have to be online. More times than not, you will not meet your client until after you're hired. Even if a realtor has referred you, most customers are going to check out your website first. So you absolutely have to make a good digital first impression. So we're asked this question often still, well, I'm a service-based business, do I need a website? And the answer is absolutely yes, and especially if you're a service-based business. You have to be online to build your business and to gain customers. More times than not, as I mentioned, you will not meet your client until after you're hired. 73% of customers will judge whether you're a credible business based on your website. So as you'll see throughout this presentation, I'm real big on analogies, and you'll hear a lot of them through this talk. So I like to can, for people to think about their website as their virtual storefront. So compared to a brick and mortar business that sells goods and has a physical location, the upfront cost for a website is nominal and the monthly fee to host your website is far less than rent. Your virtual storefront, well to say with utilities included, which is hosting and SEO work, et cetera, Cost between $55 and $249 a month, depending on your service plan. If you work with the HomeGage web team, other agencies obviously charge differently, but that's what I can speak to since I'm representing HomeGage. Uh, if you consider that, that the most you'd spend out of pocket is $249 a month, you'll recover the cost if you book just one single inspection per month. So you have a website and you say it's doing fine. 
And I've had these conversations so many times with inspectors at different conferences. They're like, well, I have one and it's great. I still get business. And it's like, okay, well, you might not be getting business because of your website. You might be getting business because you've been in business a long time and you get a lot of referrals. So some, some things to consider if you have any broken links on your site, is the design outdated? Is the website loading slow? All of these factors will not only affect your conversions, but they will also affect where you rank in the search results. Now I mentioned conversions and a conversion is any time that someone takes an action on your website that results in them contacting you. So this could be a click to call you. It could be a click uh, filling out a contact form. It could be a click to send you a text message or to schedule an online inspection. So conversions are everything. Your website draws people in, but then the goal in that is to get them to contact you so that you can book a job. Technology and user preferences are constantly changing. So what was cool or trendy a year ago or three years ago or five years ago may no longer work online. So another analogy, so if you have Consider the features in a 2016 model car. So when you bought the car, everything was bright, new, cutting edge for that year, but the next year's model had improved features and the next year's model improved on that. So you get the point. So a website that's three years old is not gonna have the same features as a website that launches today. In order to stay compliant with the latest browser versions, design trends, and the current online best practices, it is recommended that you get a new website at least every three years. All right, so now we're just gonna talk about the basics of a website. Um, so your domain name is your address. And this is what you purchase through a domain registrar, which is someone like GoDaddy or Namecheap. Those are two very popular ones. So this is completely separate from anything else. You have to have that address before you can build a site. So if you then consider the website being your house, that your website is built on your domain name or your address and includes all of the design, the site functionality and the content. So you have your address, which is the domain name. You have your website, which is your house and your website is hosted most likely by your web company. So that's where the website lives. And this is where you pay the hosting fees per month or per year, depending on what your plan is. So I cannot reiterate this enough that it is critical that you renew your domain name. If you let the domain name lapse, your site will go down. So we have a lot of inspectors who will host with us. They'll get a notification from GoDaddy that their domain name is up for renewal and they think they're good because they have a site with us, but that's unrelated to us. So most web hosting providers, HomeGage included, are not domain registrars and we have no control or authority over your renewal. So if you let this the domain name lapse and you don't renew it, your site will go offline. And someone may snatch up your name and then you don't even have your domain name any, anymore, excuse me. So it's very important that you do that. So main lesson in this is to renew your domain name, always. Right, so digital marketing and SEO work in conjunction with other marketing efforts. They work together, it's not a replacement. So anything that you're doing digitally doesn't mean that you can ignore or not nurture these other relationships that are offline and that are out there in the real world. So now we'll talk about relationship building. Starting with the importance of hitting up your local real estate agencies, realtors, and other real estate agent groups. Bring candy, snacks, business cards, and flyers. Ask to leave the cards or brochures at their listings. You can cater lunch for their next meeting. Offer to do a presentation on the importance of a home inspection. This is obviously something that a lot of people don't know 
uh, when I bought my house, I didn't have a home inspection. I didn't realize that it, a home inspection even existed. So educating the customer base and being a resource for what we're going to call your referral partners um, is going to make you incredibly valuable to them. And they're going to appreciate those efforts. Uh, if you can, offer to teach a continuing education class. This is another very important one that people don't think about, uh, which is sponsorships. So sponsor a little league team and any other family-friendly, non-political organization in your community. What this does is it gives you the opportunity to get your name out there. Little League is great because usually it's, you know, 150, maybe $200 to be a sponsor for the season. And you'll get a little banner hung up at the ballpark and you have all these families coming in watching their kids play Little League and they're seeing, you know, the best home inspection company over here. And they're like, oh, that's cool. They're sponsoring my kid. And people remember that. So stuff like this is really important. Um, when you sponsor a local organization, uh, most of those websites will have a page showing their sponsors and they will put your logo up there and link back to your site. This is called a backlink and backlinks are really important for SEO and to give your domain authority. So there's a really good example of, of the, I'm going to circle back to the snack thing. Uh, it's up there a little bit. Uh, but we had an inspector in Atlanta who won over an entire real estate agency with his biscuits and gravy, so much so that they started inviting him to every event just hoping to get fed. So never underestimate the power of feeding people to help you establish your business. It is goodwill. They love you. And whether it's you or your biscuits and gravy, like it doesn't really matter because you're going to get their business from them because you have, you have struck a chord. All right, so we're gonna talk now about website design best practices in 2021. I'm gonna start with minimalism. And this is basically the fewer the, the interface design elements, the better. So years ago, um, websites would get junked up and cluttered with all sorts of things just because something could spin doesn't, need, meet, no, doesn't mean that it needs to spin. So that's not cool anymore. Um, so whether this is the use of white design, contrast, or clear topography, a well-designed website is going to make navigation easy and provide accurate information. It's also important that that website is responsive. As the mobile user base increases, good visual effects and a search experience are factors that have to be considered in web design in 2021. 63% of your users are viewing your website on a mobile device. So it is critical that your site conforms across devices and platforms. That's what responsive means. It means that your website is going to fit whether it's an iPhone or whether it's an iPad or whether it's a desktop or a laptop. So it has to work and appear functional and smooth and intended to work on those devices. User friend, oh, my speed didn't come up. I'm just gonna do this real quick because I know it's there. Okay, we'll talk about site speed. So Google will rank quick loading websites higher than they rank slower sites. It only takes three seconds for 53% of users to abandon a slow loading site. So half of your users will abandon a site that takes three seconds or more to load. That was three seconds. I just paused for three seconds. So that's how long it's going to take. Uh, that's very, very important. It's going to help with your SEO. It's going to help with your user experience and everything about Google and your website performing well is about user experience. Uh, which brings me to user friendly, which is the next one. So that same three seconds is also how quickly a visitor will make a decision on whether to stay on your site or visit a competitor. So if they arrive on your site and it looks like it's 10 years old or five years old, or there's a bunch of 
nonsense happening, cluttered information, they can't easily find what they're looking for, or what you do, then they can, they'll know that almost instantly. They will know that within three seconds. Great content. So content is king. And you will hear this a whole lot because content is king. And it will be for quite some time and it has been for a while. Content is still king. Every page on your website that you want to rank with Google needs to have at least 350 words. Your website's content is the most important factor in how well it performs online. So all the other factors that I just talked about, they're all, they all work together, but without good content, nothing else matters. That said, no duplicate content. So duplicate content is when the same copy appears in multiple places online. So this is when someone has copied and pasted and shared someone else's content as their own. This is very bad. Google will find you and they will penalize your website for using duplicate content. That penalty results in you ranking lower and lower and lower. Basically, they're saying we busted you and that's not cool. So we're going to, wherever you were in the search engine results, we're bumping you down. And that's the last thing that you want to happen. It's important that you make text on your website scannable, that you use headings that help search engines read and understand the text, and that serve as signposts for users. So how your content is arranged is also critical. You want to use enough white space to break content into smaller and more manageable pieces. White space and design should take into account everyone on all devices. Huge blocks of text cause user fatigue and increase your site's bounce rate. The bounce rate is when a visitor leaves your site or bounces from your site. So they, they're not actually perusing it. They don't go any further. They're like, oh my God, this is too much. I can't. And they bounce. Going back to the fact that you, most users are on a mobile device. What looks great on your desktop computer will show as a giant chunk of text that will also increase your bounce rate. So something on your, on your main monitor that looks normal, once you squish that down to an Android or an iPhone and a user has to scroll and scroll and scroll and you're like, where does this end? Well, they're not gonna stick around to find out. They're gonna be like, oh, this is bad design. So how that's arranged is very important. And finally, good websites will incorporate a strong call to action or CTA on each page and end with one in the footer of the website. Every successful website needs to have multiple calls to action or CTAs for visitors. So a CTA is any clickable link or button that puts them in contact with you, whether this is to schedule an inspection, call you, send an email, submit a contact form, when someone clicks on that CTA, that's what's called a conversion. I'm going to talk a little bit more about content. As this illustrates, start with what's most important. On your website, you're going to want that to be what you offer and where. So home inspection, home inspection services in Asheville, North Carolina, and is what I'm going to want on my website. So the first, as soon as a user gets there, as soon as a visitor arrives, they're going to know what your site's about. Make sure that the info, that the information that you're talking about is understandable for the non-specialist and avoid insider language. If you're going to use a complex word, for, spell out acronyms on the first reference, like I did with calls to action, and then I said CTA or with search engine optimization, and then that's SEO. Research shows that 90% of the information transferred to the human brain is visual. So people are going to process visual information 60,000 times faster than text. If there's any picture, pictures, images, graphics to include on your website, those are really, really great for the user. People like that, and Google likes that. 
So the most important thing to remember about your website, most important thing is that your website is for the user. Google is going to rank your site based on how well it addresses the needs of visitors. So Google doesn't care about your 100 certifications. What Google does care about is how those certifications are going to help give each visitor on your website the best experience and ultimately the best home inspection. Okay, so it's time to let's let's get social. Why should you invest time on social media? I can tell you I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of inspectors and many of them are not fond of social media. They don't understand why they need it. They think it's um, a younger market. Well, those are the people buying houses. So you definitely want to step into that market even if it's uncomfortable for you. What social media can do uh, increases your reach and can help you build your organic traffic. It gives buyers and sellers an image of you, of who you are, uh, that works in conjunction and in tandem with your website. And you not having social media can indirectly create business for your competition. So social media will help you promote content and boost site traffic. Uh, people sharing your links will exponentially expand upon your audience and can result in more clicks to your website. Increased traffic to your website is a signal to Google that your website is worth something and that people like it. So increased traffic to your website will help your search ranking over time. Statistics show that nearly 70% of consumers like to use social media for customer support. That's 70%. And 33% prefer social media over the telephone. They don't wanna ever talk to someone. They wanna be able to find everything that they need online and they want to be able to book an inspection online. So we're going to talk about leveraging social proof. What this means is people want validation before they commit to a product or a service. They want to spend money on something only after they have confidence in that service or goods. 57% of people will look for your social profile to find others who have experience with you or your product. If they find a good percentage of customers speaking well of you, it'll be easier for them to make a buying decision. And ultimately that's what you want. You want people to choose you. People like doing their homework before investing in a product or a service. They trust online reviews and recommendations, including reviews on social media channels, more than they will ever trust or buy into a sales pitch. Real social proof can help enhance your SEO efforts. Your brand looks more viable and worthy when search users see ratings displayed right in the search results. When you ask for feedback from your existing customers, you're showing them that they're valued. You can, they see that you care and that strengthens the relationship between you and your customer base. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about everyone's favorite, the Facebook. So how do you start? Um, to start a Facebook business page, you first have to have a personal page uh, and then you set it up from there. You, it's important that you join relevant groups and invite all of your friends to like your business page, invite industry partners to like your Facebook business page. And this could be people like realtors, roofers, electricians, subcontractors, anyone you have a relationship with that you have a mutually, you know, you're referring one another for jobs. Uh, Relevant information that you share on Facebook as an experienced home inspector has tremendous weight behind it and it helps to build your brand. Asking these people for likes also usually results in what we call reciprocal likes, which helps you expand your audience. So if you ask you know, your favorite agent, hey, please like my home inspection page, of course they're going to. Um, and you like their page, they like your page, 
So anytime that you share an interesting article, you have the opportunity to reach more people. So for instance, your realtor shares your link on a blog titled what to expect as a first time home buyer. And they're like, oh, someone needs, everyone needs to know this, you know? So they share it. One of their followers shares it. One of their friends shares it. And all of a sudden you have this one article that you put on your page that has now been shared by, you know, five, 10, 15 people, thus expanding your reach. And again, this is free to do. This is why it's important that you're producing shareable content. Facebook is also a great forum for sharing short videos. Uh, one of our inspectors does this very well and has quite a following for her posts. So I wanted to share what Ricky with Pink Flamingo Inspections does. And also a big thanks to Ricky for letting us include this in our presentation. Hey y'all, it's Ricky with Pink Flamingo and I'm out on a barn dominium install. And um, they were having a little bit of trouble with the builder getting things done and getting them done right. And I'm in the attic and you can kind of see that that's daylight. You can also hear it too, because the chimney's set out. It just, doing whatever check that out it's been like this since it was first put up so um let me see because it's definitely a joyce and jesus situation in here so just give me just a second to show you you can see where the framing numbers actually have water stains because they've been open it is just nutty 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 this is what happens when you don't hire a realtor and you don't have base inspections done. No matter where you're building at, there is a code, I promise, to make sure that it's built properly. So um, get them inspected and you won't have an open chimney for eight months. Follow us on Pink Flamingo Inspections on Facebook or Instagram. And if you need anything, give us a call 281-217-2200. Y'all have a good one. All right, so I shared that example because um, Ricky does tons of these videos and is very active on social media. And it doesn't have to be some big complicated something. It can be, you know, not even a video, but a picture of something like this. And like, holy cow, I saw this. Anything that you can share is gonna, you know, increase activity to your page. So before moving on, I don't know um, if, Brenda, if there are any questions I should maybe address, if anyone has questions, or Dan, if you've seen any come through that you think would be important before continuing through this presentation. We did have just a couple of uh, questions, and I do see that Dan has answered some, so let's see. Um, should a site be one long scrolling site with anchors? No. Uh, the reason that you don't want that is because you want multiple pages that you can rank with Google. So you, so the way that keywording works is you're keywording as one page. If you only have one site that scrolls and scrolls and scrolls, you can only have one keyword on that page. So then you'll have to choose, well, do I want home inspections, home inspector, home inspection services, and then what area do you want a keyword for? So it limits you when you just have a single site that has a scrolling that's just on one page. It limits you or the work that we do on the back end, we're kind of crippled by the fact that you only have one page and there's only so much we can do with a single page. Okay, and I do see that Dan is answering some of these questions, so I don't want to ask them and okay, fine. Uh, thank you, Dan, so much. Um, Thanks, Dan. I'm trying to get. To, I'm trying to get to them all, all, all as fast as I possibly can. There's definitely a lot coming through. So, well, Dan is our managed hosting developer and works on all of our websites. So he's. We have them over 1,100 of them. So he's used to being on it like that. So he's a good little partner in crime for this presentation. <laughs> he's doing a good job. So Dan, if there's any questions that you see that. Uh, you would like her to answer, just go ahead and ask them and I'll sit back to you. Thanks, Brenda. Uh-huh. Carla, Carla, there's a couple, but did you just want to wait until the end or did you want to answer some of them now? I mean, maybe wait till the end because some of them might be covered in the next two thirds of this presentation. 
Right. And then if anything isn't, then we can certainly circle back because I want everyone to have an opportunity to get their questions answered because I'm so grateful that everyone's here today. Yeah, so if there's any questions I haven't answered yet, um, we'll just know that we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. If they're not covered in the next 20 or so slides. <laughs> All right. Hey, y'all. Sorry. Okay. So this is another example of one of our home inspectors who is very active on Facebook. Uh, this is James Gaither with Loyalty Home Inspectors, and he does absolutely everything right. He has probably post, he has, first of all, 1,044 followers on Facebook. He generally shares two to four posts a day. He is always meeting with realtors, insurance agents, like you name it. If there's anyone that he can meet with that he can help, um, he's gonna do it. So there's always these pictures of him with um, mortgage brokers or insurance companies like you see in this one post here. Uh, and if he doesn't have a whole lot to report, he'll just say, you know, beautiful day. Here's a picture of me on a ladder. Uh, so he's great on social media. If you're struggling to know where to start, which I know a lot of people are, um, a simple thank you for letting me inspect your home or thanks for your referral and confidence in insert your inspection company name. Uh, these are great ways to acknowledge not only the customer and the referral, but you're also sharing some activity to your timeline. And it takes just a few seconds. It doesn't take long at all to do that. If you have one inspection a day, just Thank them for having for letting you do that and post that to your to your Facebook page. Next, we're going to talk Instagram, but not a whole lot. <laughs> um, we primarily recommend Facebook, uh, but if you're committed and you want to expand your social reach, Instagram has been really successful for some of our inspectors willing to do the work. Uh, it's important that you keep the account active. It's important that you use all the hashtags. Uh, I'll move on to the next slide that shows some examples of these posts. All right, so these are some inspectors that do very well uh, using Instagram. Uh, they literally use hashtags relevant to their business. So what a hashtag does on Instagram, it's used to categorize post content and make it more discoverable. Because you can set up Instagram to simultaneously post on Facebook, you can kill two birds with one stone. So you definitely, if you're going to use Instagram, that's a great way to, you know, be active on Instagram and on Facebook. So Facebook is, is what we recommend the most. It's kind of the most manageable and it's pretty popular. Uh, but certainly we love overachievers. And if there are any other social media channels that you want to work at, we can certainly, you know, give you advice on that. And we know that they do work. All right, so now we're going to talk about SEO, uh, otherwise known as search engine optimization, also known as the Google. So basically, SEO is how you are able to get the Google love. First thing I want to explain is that this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So all good SEO work happens over time and requires patience and a long-term commitment. So if you can think of it the same way that you would a gym membership, everyone knows that you cannot join a gym and expect significant results immediately. Your effort and your constant attention will help this membership work for you over time, but nothing that's good or long lasting is gonna happen overnight. There's absolutely no quick, quick fix to, you know, trick the Google and uh, be up there on page one. So, Another analogy for you, uh, a website without SEO is like a car without gas or a house without utilities. SEO is essential for your website to function. A website that's just sitting there, that's not cranking out fresh content and that is not doing other things to optimize the site itself is not gonna do you any good. SEO is a critical essential ingredient. So what is SEO? 
So search engine optimization helps your website gain quality traffic through organic search engine results over time. So what this means is that when someone is searching for a business, say Home Inspection Asheville, you want to be returned in the page one of the results. Everyone does. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of websites that are launched every day. Everyone wants to be on page one of Google and there are a few, like it's a hard road there. There's a lot of work that's required. Um, organic traffic is the traffic that matters the most when you're building your online presence because it is earned. Like you're doing the hard work, following Google's guidelines. Google always puts the user first and so should your website. So now we're gonna talk about good and bad SEO. So good SEO produces for people, shady SEO produces for search engines and Google knows the difference and they will penalize your site. So in our industry, uh, this is referred to as white hat SEO and black hat SEO. So I don't need to re read the bullet points to you necessarily. Uh, the white hat SEO is when you, you know what Google expects, you are doing the necessary things to appeal to the user, which is going to appeal to the search engines, and you're using keywords organically, complying with all those guidelines. Uh, Black Hat SEO puts out low quality duplicate content. Um, they practice keyword stuffing. Uh, what that is, is that website that I'm sure everyone's seen, at least we have, where um, the first paragraph is, if you need a home inspection in San Diego, hire your San Diego home inspector for your San Diego home inspection in San Diego to get your home inspected by a San Diego home inspector. So clearly that's not written for the user because the user just doesn't need all that information. So it's copy like that on a website that someone's trying to manipulate the search engine to pick up that San Diego home inspection uh, verbiage and it's not gonna work. Um, Duplicate content, I think I already mentioned that. So again, content is king, needs to be engaging and relevant to readers. Uh, it's important that you publish fresh and original content regularly to boost your website's visibility. Um, as you can see from this graph, both the white hat and the black hat SEO require in the beginning, roughly the same amount of effort. So the sharp dip that you see in the green lines which is the black hat SEO, represent those efforts being caught by Google and the site being penalized in the search results. The increase that you see in the pink lines shows the site with good, solid, ethical SEO gaining traction in the search results through the good, solid SEO efforts. I can't stress enough times how critical it is that you don't use duplicate, duplicate content. Uh, we have, we're aware of sites that um, were with us maybe for SEO or have come to us for SEO because they were working with someone who was putting out blogs for them. And we have some tools that we use in our department uh, to check for duplicate content. And I think Dan one, ran one the other day that had 11 different results. So this guy thought he was getting a custom blog, but it was the same blog for every single site. So original content is necessary. It's essential, it has to happen. And our uh, home gauges SEO, we, everyone gets a custom blog, their very own custom blog every month. And that's almost 175 people. Okay, so a little bit more about traffic. So we have organic traffic versus paid traffic. Uh, we have a lot of people ask us about AdWords. Is this something I should do? Um, we don't really advise, we don't really have feelings about it either way. Um, you just need to understand the difference between organic and paid. So organic traffic is the term used to describe visits to a website that come in from a search engine's organic results rather than paid ads. 
When users type in a search, they are presented with a set of results that includes the pages ranking uh, at the top positions organically and a set of ads. You'll recognize these in the results usually denoted with the word ad to differentiate them from the organic results. Well, more and more what they're finding is that users are skipping right past those paid ads because they know that they're buying that position and they're going straight to the organic listings anyway. So the main difference between organic traffic and paid search traffic is that organic traffic is free while paid traffic is paid for. So with SEO, you can get the free traffic 24 seven, but it's not instant. It takes time for good SEO to work and generate results. With paid traffic, you can absolutely get faster results. Uh, and you'll see, you might see yourself up there. And I'm saying might because you have to craft a good campaign that is going to still get you there. It's not like you pay for an ad and all of a sudden you're at the top. It's like you have to find out what works. So you're paying for that. Then you also pay each time someone clicks on your ads and visits, visits your website. So it requires a careful plan. It costs money. And the big thing is that once you stop the paid ads, the traffic to your website will drop to wherever it would be organically. So in order, assuming that you get a campaign that works, you're seeing yourself on page one with a little word ad next to it, as soon as you discontinue that ad or suspend it and stop paying for it, you are going to not be there anymore. So you might as well just go with the good and tried and true content is king, please Google and um, go that route because you will earn and get that space and keep doing the good work to maintain it. With organic traffic, you'll continue to get traffic as long as you continue to deliver fresh and relevant content to your users. All right, so we're gonna talk about on-page and off-page SEO. On-page or on-site SEO covers all of the optimization techniques that are implemented on the website and the pages that you're trying to rank. So in other words, on-page SEO manipulates or tailors the content of a website to appeal to users and search engines alike. What that means is there are lots of things on the back end, for instance, that our team does, like compressing the code on your site so it loads faster. Uh, minimizing or compressing the images on your site to also help with your site speed, uh, keywording your site. All of that stuff is on page, what's considered on page or on site SEO. So off page or off site SEO helps you further establish uh, your domain authority in the eyes of search engines. And this involves backlinks or link building, uh, which Mentioned in a previous slide, it's what other reputable websites, um, when they link back to your site, as you start collecting those links, Google's like, oh, well, this site must be something because it has these links. So it's a big factor in improving your domain's authority, how many sites are linking to yours. Uh, a higher domain authority will give you more juice with Google. So all of these kind of work together. So for on-page SEO, uh, we just have a little example here. Uh, this image shows search results for home inspection Las Vegas. I made a little enlarged listing. Uh, so you can see the SEO title, which is the Kelleher Home Inspections, Home Inspection Las Vegas. So the SEO title shows Gary's company name plus the keyword, which is home inspections and his service area, which is Las Vegas. These should be set up on the back end of your website by your SEO company, specifically for the search engine crawlers. Uh, the text that you see below that is called the meta description. And that meta description, which is also set up on the back end, clearly states what his business does, the area that he serves, and how to contact him. So when he's returned in the results, and that little snippet tells someone everything that they need to know about his site, um, Gary has been with an SEO for quite some time, and his site is returned organically on page one of Google for Las Vegas. Uh, 
I don't know if now might be, this might be another good time if anyone has any questions before I go into the most important thing, which is Google business. Brenda or Dan, um, is there anything that can cover before moving on? Dan, did you, uh, were you able to answer most of these? I, I'm looking at it, just making sure before I start asking. Um, yeah, um, there's there's a couple. Um, a lot of people are asking, will these, um, would the Q&A be recorded or available after the um, presentation? Yes. Okay. And then um, as a new company, is it beneficial to start with paid and slowly transition to organic? I think, I don't, I mean, possibly. And again, if you understand what it is that you're paying for, um, so the paid could have, could obviously put you uh, up front faster than, you know, if you're doing it the old fashioned way or the, the long, the long game. Um, so yeah, it can certainly be beneficial to give you a boost as long as you understand that, you know, once you have that boost, that in order to stay where you are, that you're going to have to keep paying for it. So I think that that's, you know, we don't, like I said, we don't advise against AdWords. We just want to educate our inspectors on what it means when you do AdWords. Um, another popular question is, uh, InterNACHI recommends using their articles to help with SEO. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they use them on their website, will actually hurt their SEO since it's duplicate content. Well, no, so you can put, um, I mean, what's actually better for InterNACHI is uh, for you to link to their article because that's a backlink from your site to InterNACHI's site. Um, but you can have a resource library and put a, make it a nofollow link and that kind of masks it. Like you're not trying to pretend as though that is your content. So that's something that, you know, we could talk about more, but it's just how, it's how you use it. Um, that is going to determine whether it's something that you're penalized for. Is that it? I think we're both looking at it, Carla, to make sure that we get all the answers. Oh, OK. I'm like, did I drop off? No, ma'am. <laughs> Is it still good to have my competitor's name in my web page content to try and get hits when people search for them? No, no. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> that would be one of those, you're trying to trick the search engines and the search engine, and by the search engines, I mean Google, and you don't cross Google, like don't trick Google. Here's here's one that you might cover in the next slides, but um, Stephen asks, uh, my company covers a significant area that we currently market to as three separate areas using three websites. Our content is basically duplicated except for geographic references. Is this impacting my ranking with Google? Well, it depends on if you're ranking with Google. I mean, we would kind of need to take a look at that. Um, I can tell you that best practices recommend that if you're, unless there's a significant, well, first of all, duplicate, duplicate content is, is never really a good thing. So, you know, we would recommend that you have a separate website with custom content uh, for each of those. But also that if your service area, unless there's a huge geographical difference, so we have one inspector who does home inspections in New York, and then he does them in Florida. So obviously those need different websites. But if you're marketing to three areas, like, for instance, in Western North Carolina, where we're located, and you have a different website for each of those, but they're within, you know, the same hundred mile radius, then that is definitely something that would require a little more thought. And I would, I would have to look into it, but my gut reaction is that it's probably not the best thing to do. And that you could actually be diluting your own uh, link juice from Google by having it spread across three different domains. Okay. 
there's another one that <clears throat> with the upcoming Google business part, would love to hear preferred approach for carryover character count between Google and social, Facebook for sure. For instance, go with the 155 for identical for sure, but then what to do with the remaining 95? I'm not sure I'm clear on that question. Okay. Sam, if you would uh, come back on and kind of give us more of an idea of what you're looking for. And then the last one that I'll ask is, is it a good idea to have backlinks to realtors you get referrals from? Yes, absolutely. Okay. That, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're good. Dan, do we okay. have anything else that I've missed? Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm trying to get to the rest of the questions as I, as I go along. Um, I think Carla can probably um, continue with the presentation. Okay, okay cool. All right, thanks everyone. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about Google Business. Um, I'm just gonna load all these up. Okay, so first things first, uh, Google Business is the most important citation or listing that you can have online, period. Um, Google obviously is the primary search engine people use. Google basically sets the standards and de standards and defines the best practices online. So Google reviews and your Google business listing um, is everything. So when setting up your listing, okay, first of all, if you don't have a Google listing, make one. Uh, what you need to, the, Another important, all of this is important. I'm just not gonna say the most important thing. Everything on this slide is very important. So your name, address, and phone number, uh, or NAP, as you see in the first bullet point, um, has to be identical in every online listing. And by identical, I mean, if you have Main Street and street is spelled out in one listing and abbreviated in another, that's not, it's not gonna hurt you, but it's not gonna help you. Um, because Google values accurate information for its users, it will rank listings with any discrepancies. It won't rank them as high as listings across the internet uh, with information that matches across directories. So it's very important if you have, you know, your information in Google business, uh, and then you also have, you know, Home Advisor or wherever else your business is listed. If you're a Home Gauge user, if you have your Home Gauge listing, they need to be exactly the same, down to if the streets are abbreviated. Uh, this makes your listing more authentic in the eyes of Google because you are putting it in the same place every time. Um, it's very important that you completely fill out the listing and. If you do like nothing else, just create your Google business profile, completely fill it out with accurate information. And okay, this is really the most important thing, uh, which is to ask your customers to review you. So your listing alone is great. That's a great start. Um, the second most, oh no, it's the most important thing. You have to get Google reviews. You have to get Google reviews. Uh, if you use HomeGage software, you can set up a time released message or a TRM that will automatically send an email to your customers asking for a, re a review. And we have, you know, thousands of inspectors that use this option. Um, it is for local SEO, which is, you guys are a local business. So it's important that people, you know, within your service area, that's what local SEO is, um, that they're able to find you. So the quality and quantity of your Google reviews account for more than 20% of your local SEO. So they're absolutely critical to local search. Uh, your Google business page and building reviews is the single most cost-effective way to market your business is building those reviews. It is the single most cost-effective way to market your business. Google reviews. So they are everything. We'll take a look at that in the next slide. All right, so this slide 
is showing what you're looking at here are the organic search results for two inspectors who are in our HomeGages SEO Builder program. On the left is Lakeland Home Inspection. Uh, they've been in our SEO program for 42 months. Uh, we go by months because we provide uh, six month reports. So we look at it that way because we're looking at over previous period and over previous year. Okay, so anyway, he's been with us for 42 months. Uh, they built their first site with HomeGage in 2017 and built a new site just last year in 2020. So uh, they're active on Facebook. They are diligent about asking for Google reviews. Um, as you can see, hopefully, maybe see, they have 177 Google reviews. Uh, the screenshot there is a um, is showing the results when you Google Home Inspection Lakeland. So they are the third in maps. That's what that's called above view all. Those are the maps listings. So they're the third result returned in Google Maps. Just below that is the organic listings for the websites. So they're the first organic listing for Home Inspection Lakeland. So the owner of the company, Alex, uh, since he started in 2017, has added three full-time inspectors and has also opened a second location in Sarasota, Florida. And we are also we built that site and we're also doing SEO for that site. So he's had really great results and he has been wonderful with Google. Um, he's made Google his best friend, which is what we all wanna do. Uh, the next example next to that, so, uh, Aztec Home Inspections has been in SEO for 36 months. Uh, they built their first site with us in 2018 and is launching a new website next week, maybe this week, imminently, like in the next, in the next few days, whenever Dan does it. Um, Mike is active on Facebook and regularly asks for reviews from his customers. Uh, he currently has 158 five-star Google reviews. So the results that you see there, uh, Aztec is the third result returned in Google Maps and the second organic listing returned after Yelp for his service area, which is Home Inspection Harrisonburg. Uh, Mike is one of HomeGage's top performing inspectors. So he is constantly busy, constantly killing it and is a very good student because he listens to what we say. So the next, what we're going to talk about now, uh, we've stressed throughout this presentation uh, that content is king and content is still king. <sighs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Okay, so on this slide, so what we're going to talk about is blogging. So since you know content is king, the most important thing that you can do for your website is to add new content on a regular basis. Uh, this will encourage the search engines to crawl your site more frequently, and this will help your SEO rankings over time. Blogs should have long tail keywords. This means, so a long tail keyword is a few words that describe the content of the article and also considering terms that people would search for. So these are going to be set by your SEO content producer uh, on the back end of your website. So this is one of those on-site SEO things that, that we take care of in the background and then you just have a pretty block. So we'll look at that more on the following slides. Uh, the content should be engaging for users and something that will be shareable and interesting to people on social media. So the next slide, uh, we're gonna look at examples of popular posts that give our inspectors the most traction and the most engagement on social media. Okay, so these are three recent, or not recent, well, these are three blogs that we have posted uh, for one of our SEO inspectors. So we have five spring home maintenance projects, the uses of drones and home inspections, why you should order a home inspection on new construction. Of these three posts, five spring home maintenance projects outperformed the home inspection posts. The keyword for this, the long tail keyword is spring home maintenance projects. So what that does is it drills it down to describing not just home maintenance, not just home projects, but home maintenance projects that are completed in the spring. 
So spring home maintenance projects is going to be your keyword for that. So if you were to read that blog, you'll find it like beautifully interwoven throughout the copy. All right, here are some three more examples of blogs. Uh, of these three, fall lawn maintenance tips was the winner here, followed by how to get your home ready to sell. So the keyword was fall lawn maintenance and get your home ready to sell. And those were the two most popular blogs out of that set. And this slide shows one of the most popular topics we write about, which is how to declutter your home, uh, was in the top place for these blogs. So the reason that all of these posts work is because they help the user. And again, good SEO and how Google looks at your site and how you're providing a good user experience, the goal, they're user focused. You have to help the user. So while you might be inclined to write about foundation cracks, uh, people on social media are unlikely to share that post. Um, a good case, a case in point. Okay, so we had an inspector uh, request a blog on home ventilation because he really loves home ventilation. And he thought that that was going to be just a you know, gold star winner. We advised that it probably would not be a winner on social media, uh, but we still wrote the blog. You know, he pays us. So we wrote the blog per his request as part of his monthly content. On Facebook, the home ventilation blog received only four clicks. So four, four, one, two, three, four clicks. His top blog post to date had nothing to do with home inspections or home systems. So a blog that we wrote for him on garage organization had 190 clicks. A blog we wrote on summer lawn maintenance had 215 clicks. And a blog on improving curb appeal was the best performing with 384 clicks. When I say clicks, I'm talking about visits to your website. So that one piece of content that he thought was gonna be just amazing, he got four visits to his website from that. The blogs that we wrote out of topics that we know perform well and that people are interested in, he got you know one month almost 400 visits to his websites from a single blog post. 215 and then 190. So, you know, the content that we write is, it's to do the, it's to help you, it's to do this for you. So while, you know, we will occasionally, you know, have an inspector ask us to write a blog that we know is going to be, you know, probably not well received, even if it's important information, you know, we'll certainly do that, but we'll always let you know that, you know, we'll absolutely do that. And um, you just might want to be aware that this you're probably not going to see the same results as you do with some other content. So every click that you get to your site is like scoring Google points. Google doesn't really have points. We're just using that for this presentation. But to be successful online, you absolutely want the Google points. You want all of the Google points, anything that you can get. Um, any traffic to your site, all of that is just going to help you with Google. All right, this is, okay, so Google Search Console, so this is going back to, you know, everything Google. So Google Search Console is a free tool that is offered by Google that helps you monitor, maintain, and troubleshoot your site. Uh, it's important that you connect your site to Search Console when you launch uh, so that you can submit your sitemap uh, and have access to these tools. So your sitemap is exactly what it sounds like. It is your home page, your about page, your inspections page, your contact us page, your services page. It's a map that is formatted and designed for the search engines. So it's basically like a little chart and you send it out and say, hey, I have a website and here's a little map of it. And you have to have that for Google to index your site. So if you're not connected to Search Console and you've not submitted your sitemap, there, Google doesn't even know that you exist to crawl you. So that's absolutely essential. So you'll need Search Console so that you can ask Google to re-index your site when you post new content. So if you add stuff to your site, you can say, hey, Google, I have something new. Um, and then they'll crawl your site 
or you can ask them to. They, they'll, they'll decide if they want to. Uh, when you are generating content often, um, the search engines kind of start detecting that and they're like, and they'll just crawl your site themselves because they're like, oh, this person always puts out new stuff. So that's another reason why content is king. Okay, Google Analytics. Uh, make sure you have this installed on your website. It is how you're going to track your hard earned results. Um, Google Analytics is a code that's installed on the back end of your website that basically is going to track all of your all of your traffic coming into it. Uh, it lets you track multiple metrics so that you can see traffic trends, popular pages, user experience, and also device functionality. So the main purpose of the analytics is to track uh, website activity, such as session duration, pages per session, bounce rate, et cetera, along with individual users on the site and information on the source of the traffic. This is extremely valuable information that you will not have access to unless you have this code on your website. So let's take a look next at what you can see in analytics. Okay, so Google Analytics, year over year data for six months. So what you're looking at here, we'll start with on the left. First of all, both of these inspectors are in our HomeGage's SEO program and saw significant growth in their organic traffic and in their site conversions, which again is being contacted by a customer. Um, so you'll see, for instance, there's the little pie charts. The blue is direct traffic. That's when someone types in your website address. Uh, the green is organic search. That's when someone types in home inspector Asheville, home inspection Asheville, and that user clicks on, your, on the search engine result and arrives on your site. Um, so the green chunk is really what we're most interested in because uh, organic traffic is SEO and it's how you're going to how you're going to uh, benefit and grow and rank better over time. Um, so for this first inspector on the left, he's been with us for 18 months and in a six month period. So I just pulled these numbers yesterday. So this is basically showing September to March uh, compared to the previous year over year period. Um, so we had 956 users and 1,461 sessions. So what this means is that 956 different people visited his site a total of 1,461 times. So that's great because it means that, you know, he had close to 1,000 users, but those repeat sessions is multiple users going back to the site multiple times. That's what the sessions are. Um, so Year over year in the six month period, uh, he saw 272% growth in his organic traffic, which is awesome. Uh, and he saw 1,295.65% growth in his conversions. So after being in SEO for a year, he, we were able to look back and see that in the six month period from September 2019 to March 2020, he had 23 conversions, which is again, phone call, text, email, contact form, any action a user takes to contact you. So he had 23 and then the next year in the same time period, he had 321. So those are really great numbers. Um, the next chart we see, we're gonna look at a 30 month SEO inspector who in a six month period had 20 or 2,668 users who visited a site 4,155 times. Uh, year over year, he saw 130% growth. Uh, his overall traffic was 54% higher and his conversions were up 220%. So he went from 34 conversions to 109. So, if you think about conversions as being an opportunity for you to book an inspection, uh, that's what you should be thinking, because it is. If someone's calling you or filling out a contact form or scheduling an inspection or texting you or sending an email, then they've gotten through that funnel to the point where they've taken that action. So 
each one of those conversions is an opportunity for business. So it's any event where a user contacts the inspector from the website. Um, the conversions shown here include, as I mentioned, telephone calls, contact forms, emails, texts. Once the contact is made, it's up to you to book the inspection. So we get the visitor through the funnel, they respond to the CTA or the call to action on your website, and you get to book an inspection. So remember that the most important traffic that matters for SEO is organic, which is the green slice. And both of these inspectors saw exponential growth in this channel. Brian on the left saw the 272%, Jason on the right saw 130% growth. So this said, markets and service areas vary widely, as do the offsite efforts put forth by each inspector. So obviously it's going to be easier to rank in a small town of you know, five, 10,000 people than in a city like Houston. And those are just facts. There are so many different variables um, that are going to impact you know, what type of growth you see, how quickly it happens, how long it takes. But good SEO is going to give you good results over the long term. And this chart pretty much sums up this entire presentation. Building organic traffic is going to boost your site conversions and will help your SEO. So now we're gonna do a little takeaways and recap. Uh, most important points, build your update your website, start doing SEO or hire someone to do it for you. Set up or update your Google business, ask for reviews, start blogging, share and boost your posts. Don't forget, SEO and marketing, SEO and online marketing is most successful when you are engaged as the inspector and you're doing the offsite work to help support the high quality onsite white hat SEO work from a trusted web company. So our efforts will work for you, but your efforts are gonna make it that much more beautiful. Oh, and set up your social media accounts, start engaging. Uh, so we have some sample websites that show these beautifully designed Internachi logos for 360 home inspections and red tail building services. Whether you use HomeGage or not, the web services team would love to help you if you need a new website. You can visit homegage.com to view our sample websites. I did link these images, but I have no idea what will happen if I click those links. I'm afraid it might like boot me from this presentation and I'm like almost done, but not quite. Um, if you choose to work with us on your new website, uh, we have a team of eight in web. You'd have a dedicated project manager to walk you through the process every step of the way. Once the website launches, you can opt into one of our hosting or SEO plans. And Dan, who's been so nicely answering your questions, uh, handles all of our managed hosting requests. And our SEO team has five people dedicated to helping you get the Google points. This said, we do have some show specials for those of you in attendance that are good through April 1st. And that's what they are. So $100 off a website, $200 off a website, a year of SEO, and $150 off a website in a year of minute testing. And now I'm done. So I'm going to leave that out, but we can open it up for questions. Brenda, Dan, inspectors. We are up and running. Uh, Dan, I did see that you've answered many, many of them. So would you like to ask the questions that are up here that you didn't yeah. <clears throat> So I was just going to have um, Carla kind of expand a little bit more on, um, we had a couple questions about having like multiple domain names directing to the same website, mm -hmm. if that's good or bad. And, and what's, you know, what, if you can expand on that a little bit more. Sure. Yeah, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, we have a lot of a lot of inspectors who I'm just going to go with Home Inspection Asheville, um, but maybe they also purchased your Home Inspector Asheville or Asheville NC Home Inspections or some iteration of that name. 
it's fine if you want to buy those up and point them to one domain like there's absolutely nothing wrong with that um because all you're doing like basically that's just going to direct people we will point it to the domain where your site lives so there's nothing wrong with having multiple domains with no sites on them pointing to the main site where you're on your server where your um, site is hosted um, the next question is um, difference between being labeled as home inspection versus property inspection for somebody that you know does home inspections, but they also do commercial properties. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you recommend? My recommendation there, I mean, that would require some key, some keyword research, really, um, to see what people most likely search for. Um, I, off the top of my head, I would be inclined to maybe just make it inspection services. Um, I don't know how many people actually search for property inspection. I think that home inspection or commercial inspection would probably, well, home inspection we know is a keyword and it's one that we use based on you know the research that we've done. So obviously home inspection is obvious if you're a home inspector. If you do home and commercial, I think you would, I would just limit it to inspection services because um, I don't see anyone naturally Googling property inspection because they know what type of property they have. So I think it would either be home or it'd be commercial. Um, and you can kind of capture that in the content of your services page if you leave it a little more generic like inspection services. Um, I have come, a question from Robert. Why does um, Aztec come up as third on maps when less reviewed companies appear above them? Because Google does what Google wants. Or I would also say probably th they probably also paid for Google ads, um, perhaps as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, there's no like there's no rhyme or reason to that. And um, it's, it is one of those things like it's like obviously you would think that it would come up further, but um, there's likely some finagling that's gone on there. And like Dan said, uh, maybe some ad words or maps or something like that. Um, you say to keep your website short and sweet, but yet you say to have a blog with 500 words. Right. I thought people will leave and are lazy. I thought what, huh? I thought people will leave and are lazy. No. Okay. So no, you're well. Okay. People are lazy, but the thing is, um, your, your blog is different because you need to consider the blog as being a resource. So if someone goes to your blog, they know that everyone knows what a blog is. They know that they're looking for an article. And when they get to that article, they want to have something to read. So there needs to be some meat to that. So it's different from, you know, your homepage or your services page or something like that, where they just want to quickly digest the little chunks of information. Um, but if someone is looking for your blog, looking at your blog, they expect to have something significant to read. Also, if someone's clicking on your blog from a shared link on social media, they if they were to click on it and have like five sentences, they'd be like, that's not even a blog. Why are they doing that? So um, yeah, blogs are different. It's just the nature of, it's the nature of um, and the context in which you're sharing content. Tom Aska, so was client write, was the client writing the blogs or are you researching and writing the blog? We're writing the blogs. So, I mean, for our SEO program, we have uh, two and a half full-time writers. So, or content, SEO content specialists. So no, we write the blogs in-house and it's a very complicated process because we have a lot of people in SEO and we don't put, you know, if we have four people in New Jersey, we're not gonna give them all like the same topic in a month or whatever. Um, but, you know, we've been doing this now since 2017. So we have a pretty good like library of topics to pick from. So, you know, every month we, you know, check out each inspector and like, well, you said this topic or if it's something you know, being in these strange times with the pandemic, we found and like what's been really popular is improving your indoor air quality. So also if there's something timely happening, you know, in the country or socially or whatever that we're like, oh, people might be looking for that or, you know, so improving your indoor air quality has been has been great for us. Also how to set up a home office because a lot of people are doing that. So 
things that, you know, we keep our kind of eyes on the pulse, taking the temperature of, you know, what might be popular and might, what might people look at. So all of it, you know, the topics and things that we choose are constantly evolving. There's obviously some tried and true ones too that we're going to use because we know that they're good, but we are writing each blog custom. You won't get any duplicate content from us. Um, how often do you recommend adding a new blog post to your page? Um, well, our services, we offer one a month and our pricing for SEO includes uh, managed hosting, which is Dan helping you with stuff on your website and also us keeping, you know, all the plugins and stuff up to date. So we do the we include the one blog per month if you wanted to blog yourself as often as you want to. Um, you know, we have some inspectors that supplement the work that we do with their own. Um, I think, Dan, you might be able to speak to this. I'm not necessarily sure that these, that the blogs that are submitted that we share on behalf of the inspector um, are at all keyworded or anything like that. Sometimes. I mean, not, not, <laughs> not, not really. The ones that are submitted by the inspectors, you know, that's, I'm most likely just going to be posting it, you know, as it, as it is, you know, that's why we have our SEO program that um, makes sure that make sure that keywords are being added to each blog post. Well, and something else too, um, cause you know, it's not just like writing these words and putting them in WordPress and posting it. Um, it's having that long tail keyword. It's having it appear enough times. It's setting up the, meta the title seo title the meta description tagging the featured image like there's a bunch that happens to that blog post that makes it discoverable by search engines so you can certainly add blog posts yourself and sure it's new content but really unless you're formatting it correctly and taking all the right steps it's not going to uh, be as beneficial if it's not set up correctly like that on the back end Right, and it's a it's a delicate it's a delicate line between making sure that the search engines like it, and then also a human can understand it and read it as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what other questions we have. We have a lot. We still have a lot of other questions, and I'm trying my best to get to all of them. Um, a question here, Dan, and and this would be one to answer. So because of the uh, slide that's up on the screen. Does the orange star package include managed hosting? It does. Okay. And then so, so all of our, and just to clarify, um, as our SEO uh, is $249 a month, um, but that does also include your managed hosting fee, which is $55. So essentially you're paying $195, if I'm adding correctly, $190 or whatever for SEO. But anyway, yes, our, so the SEO is kind of the primo package that includes your managed hosting. And managed hosting includes uh, up to five you know, minor updates to your site each month. And we have some inspectors who never use it and we have some inspectors who abuse it and you'll know which one you are if you're hosting with us. <laughs> <laughs> Starting from scratch, what is the average time frame to get the website up and running? Uh, right now, we're looking at six to eight weeks. Um, so that's from the time that you purchase to the time that you sign your term, and then you sign your terms, kind of get the ball rolling. There's some things that we'll ask of you. Generally, the holdup uh, is going is if we don't have your logo, we can't start building your website. If you've not filled out the questionnaire that we send for your content, because we do write all the con content custom. Uh, for you. So you'll have fresh original content. Uh, the design is custom and unique to you. So there are some things that we'll need from you in order to move forward to the next steps in the process. So as long as we're getting all of those in a timely manner, uh, six to eight weeks would be the time frame for that. Sometimes a little faster, sometimes not. Usually the not though is if we're, we're waiting on some assets or information. Okay. Dan, do you see others that you can kind of condense? 
Um, I'm answering a few of them, um, but there was another one on here. Do I need a different meta description for each page or does the main one get used everywhere? Uh, you'd want one for each, you'd want a different one, a different, a different description for each page. Yes. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we we keyword your main your main pages, which uh, so a build with us includes the three main pages of copy, which would be home your home page, your about page, and your services page. Uh, for a for a page to be keyworded, it has to have that minimum three hundred and fifty words of content. So obviously, we're not going to keyword a page for, with your contact form because there's nothing to keyword. It's just a page where your contact form is. Um, so your SEO title is going to be different for each page. Um, and the SEO title is uh, what I showed in Gary's example. It's going to be, you know, your home inspection company, home inspections, and then your service area. And your meta is also going to, the meta description is also going to uh, be specific to that, that you're doing home inspections. Now, on your about page, that's going to be something it's more likely that's going to be home inspector because your about page is about the home inspector. People might search for home inspector instead of home inspection. So we'll, we'll tailor that. And then the same thing on the inspection services page. That's going to be more about home inspection services. So that's going to need a different description as well. So the critical components of those is going to be, you know, your company name, your service area, and what the page is about. Again, that's for the search engine so that they understand it, but it's also for the users so they understand it. Does Google solicit businesses to verify my business that are already in Google My Business? I always decline these calls because I think they are scams. Most likely they are scams. Mm -hmm. Google will never really ever call you. Um, the only way that they verify your business is by sending you a postcard in the mail with a code on it. And you mm -hmm. enter that code into your Google uh, business listing uh, account. And it is a giant postcard. But yeah, good luck if you ever get Google on the phone because Google doesn't have a phone number. They don't call people. Like, I mean, they're like the big like wizard in the sky that controls everything, but you can't actually get in touch with them via phone calls. So I would be highly suspect if someone was calling you saying that they were from Google and wanting information. This question says, uh, can your SEO work be leveraged to Facebook or LinkedIn? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I'm glad that the LinkedIn thing came up. So LinkedIn, I think is great if you have a LinkedIn account. The reason I didn't cover it in this presentation is because that's more of a peer network. Um, so it's not, it's not the same as social media where you're hoping to get possible customers from it. But we do have inspectors that are on LinkedIn and that will share their articles. Um, as part of our SEO program, uh, if you're in our SEO program and give us admin access to your Facebook page, then we will brand that page for you so that the cover photo matches your website and we will share your blog post there each month. And then you get the notification email that your blog's been shared along with a link to it and instructions on how to boost the post. So we'll take care of uh, posting that content for you on Facebook. If I already have a website, do you have a review service that can make recommendations and possibly make updates to the content and usability? Okay. Um, first of all, if you already have a website and you want to email webteam at homegage.com, we can give you a free audit. And I meant to mention that, so I'm glad that came up. So we can do a free SEO audit on your website. Uh, as far as so we can tell you what could use improvement. Um, we don't work on sites that we haven't, that we didn't build. Uh, the reason for that, there's different systems. Uh, it might not be WordPress, even if it is WordPress, we don't know how it was built. So HomeGage has, you know, our own design standards and uh, certain functionality and ways of programming that we know it's like your site's not gonna break and your site's not vulnerable to being hacked. So we only host and perform SEO on sites that we built. 
because we have that control in place, knowing that we have something quality to begin with and um, that we have complete ownership or not ownership, you own your site, <laughs> but that we have complete control over everything, you know, how it's built in the and the guts of it basically. Um, this question is for Kyle. Um, if you have the know-how, are you able to make edits to your website outside of those five minor website edits in the package? Um, yes, absolutely. You can definitely make edits to your website anytime that you want. Um, and I will say, you know, the five, the five minor web, the five minor edits each month that you get is, is subjective. You know, it, it depends on what those requests are. Um, and, you know, I can definitely do more than just those five minor requests. It just really depends. But if you know, if you know, if you know your word, your way around WordPress um, and the platform, you know, you're more than welcome to make edits on your own as well. Yes, and we do give you complete access to that. So, um, you know, we do ask that you like are careful with what you're doing because I know Dan could probably attest to you too, like, you know, people deleting pages off their sites, stuff like that, fun stuff. Now, like, oops, sending us an email, oops, I deleted my homepage. Uh, but we do daily backups so we can restore it. <laughs> Jeff had a comment that said, revisit please the cost of the SEO program only for those that have an existing website that is live and being hosted by the website design company. Um, if you have a website with HomeGage and you want to join the SEO program, uh, give us a call. We'll need to check and make sure that your site is, um, that we can do it. It depends on how old your site is. Um, because like, as I mentioned, design standards change. So if you have a five-year-old website that you, you might need to make some updates or build a new site. Um, if you have a site that qualifies, if you have a HomeGage built website on HomeGage servers that qualifies for the SEO program, the cost is $249 a month for that. Okay, is there any more questions? Anything that you would like to talk about? We've got about, oh, 10 minutes. Anyone? I mean, I feel like I've talked a whole lot, so. <laughs> You've done great. I, I'm seeing the comments that they enjoyed the presentation and uh, thank you and, and you've done a great job with it, so. Uh, oh, thanks guys. You've been a great audience that I can't see or interact <laughs> with. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to put everyone's picture up here on the screen where we can see everyone? Oh my gosh, it would be. I Seriously though, like we, I know HomeGage, like we miss shows so much and talking to everyone. And I'm sure there's probably some of you out there that I've met before at shows. And I mean, I just, you know, we're just so grateful. We just love you guys. And I really appreciate you attending a little presentation. Um, and, you know, we want to help you and, you know, we consider sure like we work on your website and uh, all of that, but I mean, we really do consider ourselves, you know, your partners in helping you grow your business. I mean, because when you're successful, that's great, you know, sure, it, it, it's going to work for us too, because we're like, oh, of course we want people to be successful, but, you know, first and foremost, like every website is someone's business and, you know, we're going to treat it with care and we're going to give you our best advice, you know, for your business, whether it's on-site SEO, off-site SEO, if you have any questions, I mean, we get crazy questions all the time, but, you know, that's what we're here for is to answer them. Fantastic job. Uh, here's another question that came in. It said, I'm starting a new business. Is, is there a discount for someone who wants to do the full SEO package along with branding, basically a new business startup package? Um, there, so the 3,085, that would be the website and the SEO. We do offer logo design as well. And that, so I'm assuming that's what's meant by uh, branding. And that is something that if you want to give us a call that we can talk about, uh, I hadn't really included that or thought about that in these specials, 
but it's something that, you know, we'd certainly love to help you with. And we really like logo design as well. Okay. And Jeff has asked if you will repeat the email for the website audit. Oh, sure. It's the same one. If my screen is still up, I don't know if it is. It's a uh, web team at homegage.com. And just, just send us a link to your website and say that you would like your free audit, please. You were in the Boost conference and I said so. Uh, this one person says, I'm using GoDaddy for my site. They have an SEO link. What's the effectiveness of using that myself versus hiring a company like you? Oh gosh, I, I, don't, I don't know that I can answer that. Um, we don't really know what that means, uh, what, what GoDaddy's SEO means. I mean, Dan, do you have any, do you know what that means? Uh, not, not really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, so there are a lot of companies out there that they're like, click this box and we'll do SEO for you for $4.95, like $4.95 a month or $10 a month. We honestly don't know what that work is. So, um, you know, I, I think the question would be more for, for GoDaddy. I mean, I'm sure yeah. you're not getting a custom blog and I'm sure you're not, you might be, you might have hosting, but you might not have a developer that is, you know, working on your website. So I think with anything, it's going to be the, the quality of service. Uh, also the fact that, you know, HomeGage has been, this is our 20th anniversary this year uh, of being in business, you know, doing for home inspection software and uh, for doing websites. So we know this industry and we know inspectors. We understand, you know, the, your business. We know how to best support that. So I would say without knowing what GoDaddy's offering that the benefit in working with, with HomeGage is simply like, we kind of are you, you are us. We are all in this home inspection fest together. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're completely transparent and we, we tell you exactly what we offer, um, what we don't offer. And, you know, with GoDaddy, you know, they're not, I've worked with GoDaddy in the past, you know, and they're not the easiest to get somebody on the line for customer support. You know, with us, you know, you can always shoot us an email or give us a call um, and we'll um, help you out with whatever we can. Um, so, I mean, I think that definitely separates us. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? I think I pretty much answered all of them. There's one here that says, can you explain more? What is the year of managed hosting package? Oh, sure. So that includes the website build. So the website build is valued at $9.95 and then hosting is $55 a month. So this is, but we also have a bundled package available in our store online, uh, but this is $150 off of that. So this is a custom website plus a year of managed hosting for $13.45, which is a steal. <laughs> So before I came to HomeGage, I had my own business building websites and I didn't build a website for anything less than $5,000 for the website. So um, we, you know, we support inspectors. We want to make, you know, our, the product that we offer you uh, not only wonderful, but also accessible. Um, so we make very little money on the websites that we build uh, because we know that your success is our success. And, you know, that's what we're, that's so anyway, 1345. Uh, that's the hosting and the website and um, you're covered for, you know, a year after the site is built. So you're not charged hosting until the site launches. Um, so the it's not included in the six to eight weeks for the build. Uh, it's once the site launches, then you'll begin paying for hosting. Only you won't pay for hosting because you'll get 12 months with the package, which is why you should buy the package. Um, Kenton ask, uh, aren't the referrals most important for getting paid relative to organic traffic? 
I'm not sure I understand. The referrals to getting paid. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that question is. If you could rephrase that. Um, Charles asks, is it more important to post to your Facebook personal page or your business page? Business page, 100%. It, you, I mean, it's really important that you have a business page. You do not want, you know, your uh, potential customers seeing your personal posts. Um, your business page should be exactly that. It should be your professional presence on Facebook. Dan said, and, and not the Dan that's working with us on the panel, but Dan has said, Dan is right. HG, Home Gage, is really easy to reach. And that has kept me with them for four years now. Yay. Job. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> uh, let's see. I thought one more came up, Dan. Did you see one more? No, it was just a thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dan and Carla, thank you so much for a fantastic presentation. Lots of great information for those that are attending. And we had at one point, I think, 162 participants. So you were able to help a lot of people today, and we truly appreciate it. Oh, great. We're happy to do so. Like I said, we miss you guys. We really appreciate you inviting us to present. It's been great.